Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Hope Glory. I'm the CEO of Moving On TV. Today I'm going to be doing uh, an incredible interview with a very, very brave, courageous man, John Wedger. The reason I decided to do this interview is because we're living in a very interesting time now here in the world, in the UK. And I feel the need to tell the truth of what could be going on, what is going on with our children, with abuse and issues that people don't really want to look at. John Wedger basically was a policeman who years ago in 2000 discovered things that should not be going on with kids who are in care in particular and he was astonished he took it to his superiors and he was told to be quiet and he has done everything but be quiet since then so i am honored and feel such incredible humility to a wonderful man who is bringing this stuff out now in the great awakening to all of us um, we did our best with the interview as it cut in and out with the Zoom. However, some of it is on the phone and some of it is actually faced on Zoom. I hope you, I cannot just say enjoy the interview as it's very, very disturbing, hard hitting and huge amount of reality checks. But it is true and this man dedicates his whole life regardless to exposing child abuse and paedophilia and Satanism in this country. So if you want to find out more, you can go onto the John Wedger Foundation, which I will put up the website. And he also talks about that and gives the email address. Take care and please use discernment, respect, and brace yourself. It's going to be a roller coaster of an interview. Thank you. John, it's really good to Thank have you here today. It's a pleasure. Um, yeah, absolute pleasure. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, um, I, I just feel that you're one of the most, well, you are the most courageous man that I know. And uh, I'm very, very proud to be interviewing you on Moving On TV. So I kind of gave a little introduction to what happened to you. Um, that, so can you tell us a little bit of what you did in the police force originally and how did this all unravel? I mean, you discovered something, you went to your superior and then it all started to happen. So can you go back to the beginning, the right to the beginning? Because people that are going to be watching this, they're not going to know anything at all. Yeah, yeah, I will do. So all these people keep calling me, and I've got to keep uh, cancelling their calls. Okay, so, uh, that, that's probably what's causing the delay. Oh, okay. Uh, now, right. now I'm I'm retired. I'm a retired detective from the Metropolitan Police in London, and uh, my career was was one really of, of that of an investigator. I've done many roles. Um, I'm lucky enough to specialise numerous times. And I had, a, I had a fantastic career. Um, I ended up, not, not by choice, um, I kept ending up being put in a position where I had to investigate child abuse investigations. And uh, I, I was on four different departments uh, that ended up dealing with di governance for different sort of um, offences relating to, to children and uh, child prostitution or sexual exploitation, whatever you term it. And, and on each occasion, I was, um, I was shut down uh, and threatened. Um, but ultimately, it was my experience on, on one specialist department, Scotland Yard Department. Uh, I was on the, what used to be termed the elite, as it were, uh, vice unit. And I was dealing with um, uh, children involved in prostitution and over a very short period of time uncovered a very very well organized um sort of mafia run network of of children um being used um as prostitutes from the age of nine to 14 
and these were kids that had all come from the care system. That was one thing that was very consistent and tends to be very consistent throughout is, uh, you know, the care system's involvement in this and their, their lack of protection of children and their reluctance to do anything about it. So it's not just the police that shuts this down. It's shut, it's shut down on many, many levels. And um, these kids were being exposed to the most monumental life-threatening dangers uh, not through the fact that they're involved in high level criminality, very, very violent criminals, um, but also the lifestyle that they were involved in and, and the dangers that went with the sexually transmitted diseases, you know, some of which did have life threatening diseases. And of course, there was no benevolence here. The kids were just used as a cash cow. So, you know, no one was taking an interest in, in their health or their sexual health. And um, when I, I raised the, the, the concerns and the reality of what was going on to to my superiors, then um, the, the world sort of come crashing down on me. Hang on, stop. The world come right, crashing John, down. You, what year was this? When did this happen? Uh, well, well, I, fir I first started looking into it year two thousand, right. uh, and that it, that went it went on really until about two thousand and eleven, through that long period of time. But I was threatened by it by a very senior officer and uh, basically told if I didn't shut my mouth, I'd lose my job, my home and my children. Um, unfortunate for them, I didn't shut my mouth. I continued to um, look into it and speak out. And over uh, a four-year period, there was a campaign to totally destroy me, orchestrated from the highest levels of the police, in order to shut me, and shut me up. And during that four-year period, I nearly lost my liberty, my home, um, my youngest child, uh, my job was a very, very minor level, you know, uh, and there was nine attempts to imprison me. Uh, but, you know, as you can see, I, I continued to speak out. It didn't perturb me, but anyone who um, takes this fight on, they suffer, and they suffer very, very badly. Um, and it's a very, very dangerous thing to do. But, you know, the, um, the reality of doing nothing uh, and the and the dangers the children face and nothing, you know, my suffering is nothing compared to theirs. So um, that's why I did it. But it is a very dark, dirty world, and anyone who doesn't entertain conspiracy, well, basically they're uneducated, you know. And they okay, really are. So can we take it back to um, where were these places? Where you found all of this out? What kind of places did you have to go to? Can you tell us what they were? Where were they? So people know, you know, where these things uh, were going on. I mean, I mean, what what you find in this world is that uh, child prostitution. If you actually ignore it, it goes away. It doesn't exist. Um, so it's um, it is a case of the fact that see no evil, hear no evil. You know, speak no evil. And it works because it's a very clandestine, covert world. Now, these children, you know, they were subject to care orders. Some were um, looked after, so they might be in a foster placement. Others were in, in these children's homes, which um, aren't what, what really sort of like the, the image that's conjured up with them is that these are um, like these big Bernardo institutions. Uh, they used to be years ago, but now they're they're a, they're a concern, a financial concern, and they'll be like um, uh, a semi-detached house or a large mid-terrace house, you know, in the street, and they'll be run as um, accommodation block for for children with care orders, right. and you wouldn't even know they were there. The only thing that would sort of set them apart would be the the amount of kids that were in there, and they they tended to house about between four to six children and uh, the the care staff and the owners were making a lot of well the care staff weren't but the uh, the owners were making a lot of money they were receiving two thousand pound per week per child right. um and there'll be other kids one kid was from a, a, a traveler site an irish gypsy traveler site and that was the worst case that was the worst case so um there is there is no no culture that is immune to this um, so the traveller community can't say that they're immune to this. The Muslim community cannot say they're immune to this. The Sikh community cannot say. The Jewish community Sorry, cannot Elon, say. Sorry, the question I wanted to ask there when I lost you, 
um, I think you're back now, <laughs> is when you say different communities, Jewish, Sikh, Muslim, Christian, everything, are you talking about that the children are coming from these communities or that the abuse... I've got your question, yeah. Okay, um, can and, you tell and us what, say... what your feelings are about that? Right, what, what I'll say is that it, it's, it's too far because these kids will come from every single background and the clientele will be from every single background. Right, okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, yes. So, so what's going on? I mean, we've got people that know nothing, nothing, nothing about this. They've never heard about you. When I tell people, they say you're mad or whatever, just shut up. What's going on? How come nobody knows about this? Look, 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 uh, going back to, to, to your question and, and, and the, you know, people's ignorance, to this and that's a problem and there's a lot of judgment and a lot of ignorance um, and they think this is a foreign problem it's not a foreign problem it's very much a British problem and, and we've got a very polluted system and it's polluted at very very high parliamentary levels and maybe above you know but the, like I said the, the consistency were a lot of these children were coming from single parent families or, or broken homes and were preyed on as a commodity so these children could be taken one minute to a very upmarket West End Mayfair restaurant after hours for the purposes of sex parties. The next minute where they were traded for £500 a time. The next minute they could be traded for 10 rocks of crack cocaine in a housing estate, a big tower block, tall flat housing estate, um, crack house. So, uh, and, and the people using these children, they ranged. And if, uh, what you see, people going on about secret societies and the Masons and all this, you know, you've got to drop that out of your psyche. The only secret society here are the paedophiles. And um, they, they are across the board, you know, totally across the board. And there is a desperate need of our society to cover this up. And we have seen this consistently occurring all the time. You know, child abuse and the effects of child abuse, you know, it's the single most um, detrimental thing in our society. But no one wants to go there, no one wants to talk about it. Statistically, we could be looking at a third of the population are affected by child abuse. 70% of the uh, prison population definitely is. And a majority of, of, of um, opiate using uh, class A drug addicts are. So, uh, so much of society's ills have got their roots in, in child abuse. Yet when you look at um, any sort of deterrent, the police don't see it as a priority. Those working in it are, are massively overworked. These departments are underfunded. Um, and, and it's just an absolute pooling, pooling um, system, you know? And, and the fact that, that, that no one even knows that this goes on or, or even knows of my plight, you know, I'm not here for the glory. I'm not at all. I'm here to, to tell the world what goes on and be a preventative measure from it to ever going any further. And you're very, but at very every very level, you know, there, there are hurdles. For, for only... yeah. yeah, I'm back. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm saying it's, back. Thanks. It, it, it's, all, it's all good my end, Lauren. I just don't know what's going on. But, um, yeah, no, it, it's, it's a very, very difficult environment. And, you know, you're dealing with a lot of people that have been affected by this. You know, it could be incredibly traumatised you know, with, with a whole plethora of, of issues going on. And that's without even going down the dark path in which when I started looking into was termed SRA, yeah. Satanic Look, Ritual Satanic Abuse. Satanic Ritual Abuse. And uh, <laughs> that is where it really, really gets dark, uh, murky and dangerous. And so, that's when the real attacks occur. Because there definitely is a need. Yes. Yeah. Right. Can I just, I can, I, it's fine, I can hear everything you're saying. You know, I used to work in a home in Stoke-on-Trent years and years ago. And I remember the children that were taken in from the home because they were being abused in their homes. But now we're talking about something very dark, something that really is, is you can't comprehend it. And you're, you, we had a conversation, I think, last year, where you said this is actually happening in schools, in churches, in all sorts of places where you send your children on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? 
Yeah, unfortunately, you broke, so I couldn't hear what you was on about. Are you on about okay. SRA? Yes. That, where is yeah, the I mean, where, it, 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 Well, well who, who knows? I mean, you can only go on the, the, the accounts of the survivors because there are no... Um, there are stated cases. There have been cases that have been through the judiciary in which people have been found guilty of this crime. Um, but it, this is a real secret club. Um, and there is every need for everyone involved to to maintain that secrecy. People do break out of it. The the main way in which people break out of it is that they they go to Jesus, they because that Christian. seems to be the anchor or and or the um, the defence against this. Um, you know, going and finding spiritual help to get out of it because it is it's got its roots in spirituality. So distance of SRA or not actually doesn't matter. Those that, that do it, they definitely believe in it. And those poor sods that have it done to them, they've got no option but to believe in it. Oh. But, uh, you know, I've, I've heard of, of uh, a Catholic school being used, uh, church being used, a uh, Sorry, did abortion you say clinics, a school? mortuaries, graveyards. Uh, uh, a lot, one of the consistent ones is very posh houses, especially in the... Um, Southwest London, Surrey area. Surrey seems to be the county that crops up more than most. And we're talking. Minutes to go with this. We've only. Okay, so yeah. we're going to carry on from what you were saying. So, what is SRA? People need to understand what SRA well, well, is. It's, it's satanic ritual abuse. So, it is the abuse of a child. But it's done in, in a ritualistic environment. So there's a worship of a deity. And because satanic is really what gives it away. It's a worship of the devil, Lucifer, um, in which they, they offer themselves to this deity. And, and, and it's the, um, the antithesis of, of, of Christianity. So what, whatever, whatever they do is a reversal of, of what would be done in, the, in sort of like a, a Christian uh, so children are, are used because of their energy. Uh, sacrifice as well, you know, um, animals and also of, of children. But there was a list printed uh, maybe 20 years ago called the Rains List. Yes. R -A -I -N -S. I've read that. Yes. Talk about, about it. Talk to, about to, a little bit about that. To look into the Rains List, if you put in the word Rains, R A I N S. Mm -hmm. And the word spider cat, there's a brave lady called spider cat and she's put together a, um, a brilliant montage, a little video to this. And there's a lot of celebrities named in it, you know, in this list. And there's people like, um, Paul Botang, you know, one of the MPs, you've got a uh, commissioner of police, a bloke called Kernahan for Hampshire. There's uh, Michael Barrymore, Jimmy Tarbuck, and there's addresses. And, um, a name or an address will only go on this list if um, three people, minimum of three people, independently corroborated the person during a, uh, a, a therapy session by, by a, a doctor of um, psychiatry at the Maudsley Hospital in South London. So, you know, the, the source of this list um, is incredibly um, strong, you know, and has got credibility. And it's yet to, and it's yet to really be, be rubbished. Um, but you know, it's, it's in their, their benefit to keep everything covert. There are no spectators in this religion. So there's, you can't just say, oh, I'll go along and have a look. There's none of that. You, you, you're in it with both feet and it's incredibly dangerous and, you know, and, and people are killed. Uh, but there have been prosecutions and there have, and these, these are also publicized on the spider cats, uh, website. And there's a guy called Wilfred Wong and Lex Barry. What is SRA? Right. Um, SRA, what we have is it's an acronym uh, for Satanic Ritual Abuse. Mm -hmm. And um, it, is, it is, you know, it, well, they're pushing, um, the Satanic groups are pushing for um, Satanism to be recognised as, as an, a bona fide religion. Now, this is a dangerous move because the moment they do that, if we start speaking out against it and denigrating it, which it should be denigrated, it should actually be, you know, um, proactively attacked by the police. 
um, it, will, it will come under hate crime if we if we attack it. So, um, uh, and they're a very very well, as I say, powerful bunch. I don't want to sort of put any power in in their court because um, ultimately they have no power. That's why they they prey on on on, on the souls of others. Now. Children, animals, babies in particular, are valuable, a valuable source of energy for them. And it's all about privilege and power. And it is the worship of, of a deity, a negative deity. You know, it's Luciferian, um, and, and Satan is their, is, is their central point of worship. Right. Um, and it's hatred for humanity. Although if you, you read the, um, the, the, the mission statement for the, the Church of Satan, which was set up in the 60s by Anton LaVey in California. Mm. You know, you know they'll portray it as, as a benevolent uh, religion that's uh, uh, against um, tyranny, arrogant bullying. You know, they're into um, working in harmony with, with nature. Um, but it's, it's a lie. It's a deception. And it's been going on since the time began, really. Um, mm. And it's very covert in its nature, but it is incredibly real. Right. Um, there has been a list called the Rains List. Okay, we're recording now, so I want to get you some... Yes. We were talking about the Rains List. Yeah. Um, so how can people find out about it? Just Google R-A-I-N-S? Well, yeah, I mean, that might not be enough. You need to put... Put the word spider cat, spider, a spider, and spider cat. If you put that in with the rains list, you right. will get a copy of this list. A montage, a video montage of it um, will come up uh, by by a very brave um, anti child abuse and anti Satanist activist um, who goes under the tag of spider cat, and this phenomenal individual has put together this um, this list and uh, it's it contains all sorts of people you know from high up in the judiciary um, into the police into parliament into the acting circles and you know when when people scratch their heads and wonder how this can be in in a free and just society like like the British system. You've got to look at what has gone before us and, mm. and who blocks it. So I was blocked into investigating um, organised child abuse, organised child prostitution by someone very high up in office, one of the UK's most senior police officers. Um, again, I can't name names because I'm, I'm in court with this with this case. Um, and it's very dangerous when names are named outside of um, the judicial process because you end up being held liable. And, and the one thing in, in, in investigation to satanic ritual abuse is that the, the lack of real hard evidence. And that's a problem because it is the ultimate secret society. Sure. Um, however, you know, the, the police have monitored these groups. Um, you've, you've got... Um, Special branch within the Metropolitan Police, as um, you know, they have um, been monitoring um, satanic groups for a very long time, uh, as they as they do sort of um, all, all sorts of sort of like my, minority um, activism groups that spring up, and you know, you get things like uh, biker gangs that get monitored as links of organised criminality, you get religious groups, the cults, they're cosmos cults. Yeah. Um, so, so they have been aware of Satanism and its influence. I mean, we've only got to look at Ted Heath, our former Prime Minister, mm. that, that was actually um, publicly named and shamed by a former Chief Constable who was investigating Ted Heath, saying that not only was Ted Heath involved in multiple child rapes and murders, he was also um, involved in Satanism. And, and this this full public record uh, by a chief constable called Mike Veal, who made this bold and very brave and groundbreaking statement to Sky News a few years back. Mm -hmm. um, I spoke to many, many victims of it. Um, 
you know, the lucky ones that have survived it. And there's been enough stuff that has allegorically got out in, in the form of films and things like Eyes Wide Shut, you've only got to look at the Hammer Productions many years ago, and they all alluded to these yeah. cult activities. Um, but I'll tell you one thing, anyone who says that they were at a satanic ritual um, and claims they were only there out of curiosity is a liar. Because it just does not happen. You would know, they, you're would they, sorry, John, if someone did that, would they kill them? They just kill them on the spot, would they? Well, well people do break free from it. I mean, they, you know, these, these people are cowards because, you know, they, they won't openly um, admit that what they're doing because they, they know what they're doing is wrong. Can I, can I just say, from, from the, my point of view, is we, people have iPhones now, we have loads of ways of filming things. How come people don't go down into these rituals and film them, take well, pictures? Well, 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 okay, if you, you want to do that, then be my guest, Lauren, but I'll tell you one thing I've been told, everyone will participate, everyone. Now, if at the ritual a baby is sacrificed, its blood is let, and then the chalice is passed around with a baby's blood in it, you will drink that. So if you're prepared to drink that and then no, film no, it... No, hang on a second, the hang on a second. There's no way yeah. I'd rather die, good, but... Good, 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 good luck with that one. But, and and this, is, this is why. But why... Uh, sorry, it come out. sorry, John, I know this is a very emotive and very, very... Well, 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 it, well, well it's not that. Th these are the strict parameters in which these groups uh, work under. And, and to be exposed... You know, it, it's something that, that, that's going to be fatal for them. Uh, but people have spoken out, but it's always been post-event. But what I mean, I'm they're... saying, sorry again to stop you, if um, an undercover truther could could go down there, as I said, with a phone, why are they not doing that? But yeah, okay, so an undercover truther, good luck to them, because while they're there doing it, they will have to take part in the ritual. So good luck with that one. I understand. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, so, so no one this, gets away this, with it. This is this is a, uh, what they call laid on, where it's going to happen anyway, and you, you can take part. You know, this will be. It's not even adjunct provocateur. You know, you've got to be an active member, an active member of it. There, there's a there's a book. I mean, the thing to do is to research it. There's a book by a lady called Audrey Harper called yeah. Dances with the Devil. Okay, thank you for that. Dances, uh, and, and, can you say that again so people can it, find it's it? Called, it's called Dances with the Devil. Right. Now, Audrey Harper, um, she, she speaks about this. And she said the ritual she was taken to, because she was a street prostitute and a heroin addict, which is that they, these people do get used because they can procure children. Um, and and the, some of the, the, the drug rattled women are used... Uh, it was what they call breeders. Um, they'll be subject to, to gang rapes, be made pregnant, and then the child will be used in a ritual. And she said the first time she was there, a baby was sacrificed and she had to cut, drink their blood. Um, There's another lady that I did an interview with, and, and she actually um, said that she, that she actually been to the police and told them that, that she was used as a child to cut a baby's throat. So... You know, this is how horrific it is. Now, this list, Rain's list, has been produced. And not only is it produced, it is also like a, a, a sort of guide, a who's who and a where's where and a what goes on of Satanism. And it makes horrific reading. And when okay. you've got celebrities such as Michael Barrymore and Jimmy Tarbuck that are named on this list. Mm, yes, I've seen know, that. And, I know it's in And, and Savile was I've exposed to being a Satanist. Yeah. Mm. And so is Ted Heath. Um, but when you look at... You know, well, if we go back to, to child abuse and the, and the fact that not only does it not get investigated the way it should do, but if it is investigated on the rare occasions where it is investigated, those that go too deep, as I can allude to... Um, will be severely dealt with, as, as I was severely dealt with. Not just myself, you've got the whistleblower woman from the North, Maggie Oliver, how she was crushed. Um, you've got uh, a very, very brave senior officer who exposed um, not only just abuse, but ritualistic killings of children at the children's home called Hope de la Guerre, New Jersey, um, a chief officer called Lenny Harper, and they did the same to him. 
you know, one thing that sort of um, unites us police whistleblowers is the punishment that that we're all subjected to. And there is nothing that they will stop at in order to protect what's going on. Um, you know, they will show on one hand it needs to be investigated because otherwise, you know, the public will ask too many questions. So they do allow it to a degree to be investigated. But all they will ever do is allow the picking of low-hanging fruit. They will never allow the full machinations of what's going on to be exposed. Okay, and so... And then this does right. happen. Okay, so... Um, we're going through a lot at the moment in the UK and lots and lots of people waking up. And in America, a film called Have You Watched Out of Shadows? Yes. Right, which has had something like 10 million views of what's going on in Hollywood with Satanism and paedophilia and everything. How can we do something here in the UK um, to, well, well, to just well, well, start well, off the ball well, rolling with, well, with well, I, I, some people? I say but when you investigate, you never look at what you haven't got. Because otherwise you'll just sit in a corner grizzling. Right? You always look at what you have got. We have got the Reigns list. Right, they okay. cannot discredit and denigrate the Reigns list. It is too powerful a document. It really is. Now, we've got the Reigns list. So let's stick with the Reigns list. There are serving members of Parliament on the Reigns list. Why is that not being dealt with? There is an ombudsman that governs parliamentary activity. Why are they not being written to on mass scale? Why are Why they are... not dealing with it then, John? Because those... And, I, and I'll tell you for why. Right, now you can go to, to your politician and you can complain, which I say everyone should do. And people might say, what's the point? Well, do you know what? If you, if you start off with the attitude, and I'm not preaching to you, Lauren. No, no, you're asking I'm me saying. a question and, and I'm educating because, Thank you. you know, my people perish through lack of, lack of knowledge. It says that in the Thank the you Bible. very much, John. Right. I appreciate and, and, everything and, you're and, saying. And, and, and people need to be educated. I'm not here to placate adults. If I upset an adult, I really don't care, Lauren. Yeah, I mean, we, we can't, beyond, we can't care about now. that anymore, John, yeah, because we we're in but a bad space now. You cannot make an omelette without breaking eggs. My job is to protect children, end of. Mine too. End of, and that's the base level. And if an adult gets their nose put out, John, do you know what? We all have to live with that, right? So let, let's get the range list. Let's go to partners, write to our MPs. And let's write to the relevant cabinet minister or shadow cabinet minister that has governance for, for this, this thing, whether it be childcare or whether it be corruption or whatever it might be, and make them do something. Now, when we look at the last five consecutive prime ministers in Great Britain, right, yeah. have had strong links to paedophilia. What about and Boris I'm gonna, Johnson? I'm going I'm to explain that. What about Boris our, Johnson? Our, Sorry. Our Prime Ministers have to have, and so, same with our Ministers, have a thing called PAs. Now, they're not personal assistants. They are political advisors. So, in order for them to sort of, before they give a speech or they pass a motion or whatever they do, their political advisor will sit down and research it for them and they will sort of guide them on the legalities and, and the... Um, uh, points of conduct and reference in what they're going to do. Now, the last five Prime Ministers, their PAs, have either been convicted of sexual, Schedule 1 sexual offences or they've been investigated for it. I mean, one of them, I think it was Margaret Thatcher's political advisor, was classed as a serious threat to children. Right? So this is why these things never get out. And when you look at people like Ted Heath, that were Prime Ministers, that were active Satanists and were involved in the rape and murder of children, well, you can see why it doesn't get out. And then when you get special branch, the, the, the police unit that liaises with the military intelligence units, that back in the 70s were funding, they were funding a group called PI, which, which is an acronym for Paedophile Information Exchange, a lobbyist group who had the backing of Margaret Hodge, the Right Honourable Margaret Hodge, 
the Right Honourable Patricia Hewitt, who went on to be Tony Blair's Minister for Children, and Harriet Harman, the longest serving female MP, when you've got groups that they had, a group called the uh, National Campaign for Civil Liberties, which is now called a group called Liberty, that were protecting and promoting by and allowing them even to talk at their national Christmas conference at the London School of Economics. <laughs> and Pi wanted the age of consent between a man and a boy to be lowered to the age of 10. Yeah. And, was, and Harriet Harman was pushing yeah. for the age of consent yeah. with girls to be lowered to 14. Oh, no. And these are still serving members of parliament. When you look at Lord George Carey, who was the Archbishop of Canterbury, who perverted the course of justice, allowing Bishop Peter Ball, the Bishop for um, uh, Sussex, to continue raping young boys, which resulted in at least one suicide of his victims, to continue operating with impunity. And when you look at Carey and, and uh, Bishop Ball having close links and, and um, Bishop Ball being protected by Prince Charles for 14 years, you can see why this goes on. Mm. And you can see why the likes of me standing up and saying, well, this isn't right, you know, is, is absolutely of no threat to them. But what they, they didn't um, account for was, was the fact that we would, we, we would um, get together and be such a driving force as, as we are um, in campaigning and fighting against this. Right, you see? thank you. So, 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 so that's why, but, but the, the, yeah, this is why, this is why um, it's important, Lauren, that, 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 we, that we stick together, you know? Yes. And, um, and, and you know, and, and that we, we are unified in what we do, and all the survival groups come together, as they were going to do on the 16th of May with our proposed... Um, uh, uh, demonstration, mm -hmm. which is now blocked by the Metropolitan Police. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> and, um, sorry, and, um, um, sorry, John. Yeah, because obviously because of the, what's going on at the moment. But um, what about Boris Johnson? Uh, well, Boris Johnson. Well, well, let's look at Boris Johnson. At our monthly demonstrations that that, that we hold with the, what's called the Campaign for Decency and the Beach Home Survivor Group, the Children's Home. Um, in um, South London, their survivor group from that. We hold this monthly demonstration at midday on a Wednesday and we catch the um, politicians coming back from PMQ's Prime Minister's Question Time. And it was only a few months ago that we, we got hold of Boris just before his, um, his, his appointment to, you know, um, Prime Minister. Um, and we said, Boris, please, come on, support us in what we're doing. It's admirable, it's honourable, it's, you know, it's the right thing. And he, he looked at us and said, it's nothing to do with me, in such a contemptuous manner. Uh, you know, and then he akined child abuse investigations as to spaffing money up a wall. Now, victims and survivors, like, they interpret that as to, you know, the vernacular spaffing as to spunking, ejaculating money. You know, what a thing to say to victims and survivors who've had to endure this vile behaviour. So, no, he won't do anything. And, and you know, I've been before the Home Secretary's team, right, with, with the former Cabinet Minister for Police and Crime, Sir Michael Penning, one of the righteous guys, and God bless him, uh, and God protect him in what he does, because he's a good man, and Nicholas Hurd, who, who's a current um, Minister for Police and Crime, right, uh, Douglas Hurd's son, I've been before and the Home Office team and basically been told there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. And when I relayed my evidence, a member of, of, of the, the Home Secretary's personal office, she burst into tears at the horror of what was going on. So, well, and, then we, and then we have a thing called a D-notice, Lauren. Now, you may well have heard of a D-notice. No, well, I haven't. You know, what, what is that? You've never heard of a D-notice. Now, a D-notice, no. they'll be your viewers, your listeners, will know what a D-notice is. And it's served on people to silence them, right? And it's usually a media thing served on the media. But the D stands for defence notice. So many people that have been trying to expose 
the crimes that, that I've been exposing have had D notices served on them, mm. right? Now, why is it a defence notice? It's, just, it's a notice that was um, formulated by MI6, so the Military Intelligence Unit, you know, for, um, for overseas um, espionage or whatever the, these chaps do, um, have served a, a silencing notice on individuals. So what has that got to do, you know, the military um, intelligence, what they got to do with, with civil investigations? You know, there's clear guidelines that the, the military and the civil um, police environments never mix. Right. You know, uh, yet the military intelligence are serving these notices on people speaking out. So this clearly indicates that um, for the military intelligence units, the MI units five and six, to be involved in matters of child prostitution and expose a, means that there is a threat to the economic, the political and the financial stability of this nation, which means that bribery is being used. Right. Um, and, and then when we look at uh, who's involved in covering up? I mean, many years ago, a file of, of abuse and satanic abuse was handed to the Home Secretary by an MP called Geoffrey Dickens. And he was an MP in the, in the north, I think in Rochdale. And uh, it, it had hard evidence and a failure of the police to deal with it. It was handed to the Home Secretary who lost it. Now, this Home Secretary was the fastest ever and youngest promoted Home Secretary we ever had. And lo and behold, he is also named as being involved in satanic abuse and was investigated many, many times for his involvement with sex with young boys. And his name is Leon Britton. Yes. I've heard right? Of that. So yeah. this is why it never gets out. Mm. And like you say, why can't we get evidence? There have been many people have presented the evidence. I know of two officers that work for the um, Met Police's um, diplomatic protection, and they were the protection officers for Ted Heath. Right? They personally accosted Ted Heath and told him to pack it in because he was getting three times a week eight year old boys delivered, personally delivered. To the, to the parliamentary residence of number 10, right? Mm -hmm. And they threatened him and said, you better pack in what you're doing, sir. Uh, it did stop for two weeks and then they were both removed and then they were out of a job. This so there have really been. serious stuff, John. Sorry to stop you there because, again, so say if a parent, their children are taken away from by social services because they can't take care of them. So you're saying that that child's in danger now? Could well, be in well, danger. Well, 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 let's look, you just, like I say, whatever you do, you must use a modicum of intelligence of everything. Social services take children into care in what they call EPOs, emergency protection orders. Police take children into care in what they call a PPO, a police protection order. And they take these kids into care because they're not being looked after. And 80% of all abuse of children goes on within the home environment with parents or those that have got parental responsibility for the children. Right? So, mm -hmm. you know, we can't go sitting there and saying that social services are evil because they steal children, the police are evil because they, they protect masons who are abusing children, which is why I hear constantly is it, it, a fundamentally ignorant and unresearched way of speaking. Thank you. Right? Mm -hmm. right? We have a society, Lauren, that over many, many generations now has been deliberately depleted and whereas dysfunctionality in a form of single parent is the norm. Now, I may upset people by calling them dysfunctional. I was a single parent of four children for 20 years. It is dysfunctional and it doesn't work. You will get by and you can make a good go of what you've got. But it will weaken your family so badly that if anything goes wrong, them kids could be taken into care. So, okay, so what parents supposed to do then? How can they protect themselves? Do you know what they're meant to do? You know what I do? And, and again, I don't want to... Yeah, it's difficult, but I am going to upset people. Also, you know, keep your family strong, right? 
bring your kids up in a loving environment, right? Make sure they're clean and they're well fed, and well, don't bring attention to yourselves. Um, and do your do your best to, to not have these vultures that, that come for you. But unfortunately, paedophiles are very manipulative. They're very cunning. They're very clever. They always need feeding. And there will be social services that are incredibly nefarious. That you know, there will be um, social workers that will have very very dark connections. There will be police officers that are perverts and paedophile protectors. Are there any warning there signs, be. John, for these families? Well, well, well uh, I mean, there's a millions of millions of ways. I mean, we're, we're talking about very very deceptive and dangerous individuals which will prey on our children. But, you know, society's already done a lot of the work for the paedophile. Our kids have got unfettered and unlimited access to hardcore pornography, very dark, perverse pornography, by means of iPhones. They can just watch porn anywhere, right? You know, that will totally destroy them, might desensitise them. You know, look look at our media, look at the, the music industry, how perverse that is, and how perverse our TV. So, so we've already desensitised our kids and we sort of paved the way, the over-sexualisation of our children, you know. And when these kids do end up in these environments, you know, again, there'll be, there'll be levels of what kids get preyed on first. Now, if there's a very strong family structure and, and parents who generally care about their kids and they end up in, in the situation of being in the care system, you know, these abusers have got to be careful that they don't end up get, being caught out. Um, but some kids have got parents who don't give a toss for them. Well, they're, they're going to be preyed. And then the grooming yeah. process starts. Now, grooming, it's not a monster that grooms a child, but it is a monster that has sex with them. You know, a, a groomer, well, but, you know, some of these girls, these young girls, it was like Romeos would be used. And these were good-looking young lads would be sent into these care rooms to, to, to fill a void that the family's not giving them. A, a right, void of love, okay. compassion, yes. understanding, yes. attention. You know, because the parents, mm. for whatever reason, you know... So that sounds very reasonable. So if you're a loving family and you take care of your child, even if they have to be involved with social services, there's less chance that there will be a predator. Is that right? I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't happen because there are loving and caring people that have had their kids taken off them. And there are. But it's a lot more difficult. And, and single parents will be, will be preyed on. And they will be. Now, adults can belly ache all they want, it's, but it's a poor child that, that, that suffers. Um, you know, and there was an attempt to take one of my children into care uh, by, by the Metropolitan Police and I believe sanctioned by the Commissioner of the Met Police. So I was, I was almost in that situation myself, you know. Um, when the family breaks down, this is what happens. And again, we live in a culture now where we don't care for other people's children. We're not bothered what goes on. And, and the other thing we've got to look at, Lauren, is, is parents, they can't wait to go back to work. Now, sometimes that, that's a financial incentive to do that because they can't pay these horrendously high mortgages that we've got now. The cost of living is ridiculously high. But some people choose to go back. Now, they put children as young as six months into the care of others. I mean, let me tell you something. Right? A, a CRB check, a Criminal mm. Records Bureau check, mm. will not fish out a paedophile. DPS. Right? On a profile level, paedophiles do not have previous convictions. They don't. They don't have them. Mm. Right? And if they do have a conviction, it tends to be for a non-sexual offence. It tends to be for that of, um, of deception. These are very, very devious individuals. So CRB checks... They're pointless. You know, they are not going to win out. And we have seen numerous cases where children have been abused in these daycare centres. And let me tell you another thing. Women abuse, sexually abuse children on a paedophilic, paedophilic level as much as men do. Yes. There's not yeah, as many convictions, mm. but they are there, right? And okay. the worst case I dealt with was a woman. And, and 
there's a there's a fantastic FBI profiler called Corrine Hutstabart who actually says that, that the cases of, of, of female paedophilia has a level of spite and viciousness that she has never encountered with them with with the male counterpart. Right. You know. Um, so, so, so if, if, if you're not tucking your child in at night, then who is? And, yeah. and, that's, uh, and, and again, I know things happen, and kids do get in care, I get that. That's why you need people like me, Maggie Oliver, Lenny Harper, you need us investigating these crimes. That's why you should, as members of the public, be campaigning for the protection of us, of us brave, and I'm, I'm going to sound conceited, but I don't care. No, us you are. Brave you are brave. To actually stand up for mm. the vulnerable, mm. and we risk everything to protect them. You need us. You should be screaming for us to be brought back in, to be teaching police forces and educating them mm. and changing the system. You should be screaming for us to do Completely. that. Yeah. Okay, you know, so if people want to do something, do that. Okay, so I know lots of parents, lots of lovely people. They have little children, and they want to ch send their child to school. It, are there any particular schools or establishments that you, or can they contact you? No, no. Well, I, well, I won't know. I won't have a you list. You wouldn't actually know. List. You know, um, I, I, what can I say? I mean, if we, if we look. Uh, uh, if we was to look at reputations of schools, right? Yeah. One of the schools, the, the preparatory schools, we, we, has got the worldwide reputation for excellence, is a school called Eton. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a public school. It's a fee-paying school. It has produced 11 prime ministers, this school. <laughs> right? Yeah. Eton has been the centre of so much child abuse. Um that it, it really had to change the way it operated. Um, I'm reading a book at the moment, I'm researching an academic uh, thesis on, on abuse within our, our private and public school institutions, our boarding schools. And um, it's incredible how, how these schools have, have floated on a diet of beatings and buggery, you know, since their inception. And we are talking schools like Eton, like Winchester, where the Royals go, Bradley, you know, um, Harrow. So, no, they're, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm not an advocate of boarding schools. Um, wherever you're going to get kids that, you know, in big numbers that, that are left overnight and, um, and, and, and people have ready access, it's going to attract paedophiles. You know, if a man wants to have sex with a woman, he, he's going to go where women are, and where's he going to find them? Usually a nightclub, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know, or a dancing school, or whatever. You know, and he, he's going to do use all his charm to, to get inside that woman's knickers. He will use whatever it takes to do it. You know, there'll be no shame in it. He'll tell that woman what she needs to hear, how lovely she looks, on that. But it's all a lie, because all he wants to do is have sex. And it's exactly the same way as Peter Bowles works. Yeah, yeah, the thing is, these children can't fight back. If they don't get what they want, they will use violence. And it's easy to silence a child using shame yes. and guilt. Uh, you know, mm. and, and these are very, very dangerous people. And, mm. and you see them um, on the TV when they've been caught out or when they've been let go and they start crying. And it, that's just what they call cognitive distortion. Mm. It's the abuser... Mm. I know, I have. Blaming the victim. I'm a survivor, but, John. I'm a survivor, yeah. so I, oh, yeah. well, I do go, understand you know? to a certain so, extent. So, so what, what can we? I mean, all we can do is love and protect our children and look out for other people's children. And if there are a family that are struggling, make sure we've got their kids' best interests at our heart. And we make it known to, to those that have governments for our children that we will be keeping a close eye on it. Right. You know? So I've got, sorry John, I, there's a question that someone just gave me, which is, but why, why do people, why do people want to abuse children? What, what's well, wrong God, with them? Absolutely. What's the wrong easy, with them? The, the easiest answer I, I will give you, and the most straightforward one, and the truthful one is, they do it because they enjoy it. They like it and they want to do it. It's as simple as that. Right? It doesn't matter if they were abused as kids. 
And unfortunately, statistically, those that are abused, there's a good percentage of them have been abused themselves. Right? Yes. That is unfortunate. I am in no way saying that survivors of abuse are, are abusers. No way. No way am I saying that. Of course but not. But there is a greater percentage of those that abuse have been abused themselves. But they, they, enjoy, they enjoy it. And um, they had a choice. And they had a choice. And the choice is break the circle and that's it. Or they have a choice to continue doing it. Mm. And uh, if they continue doing it, it's because they want to do it. They enjoy doing it. Okay, so we're living now, we're in lockdown, the whole world has changed. Is this a good time now to really, really get all of this stuff moving? Well, well unfortunately, we were getting it moving. We were, I mean, there's myself and the Beach Home Survivors um, group, you know, we had organised a, a monumental, and it was probably going to be a groundbreaking breaking demonstration for the 16th of May in central London. We had so many people that were going to attend, you know, from a, a whole plethora of groups, mm. you know, that were coming. But the police have banned us because of this coronavirus nonsense, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. Right. I was due to give evidence this week at the government in independent inquiry into child sexual abuse. Mm. My statement was one of the longest statements they had, and it was it, it was the most unredacted statement because it was evidentially backed up to the hill. Mm. You know, I'm not been allowed to attend to give evidence because of the coronavirus. You know, so we we had prior to this, mm. prior to all this happening, we had um, the, the royal family at the lowest ever ever uh, public image because. Prince Charles, with, with his bizarre behaviour and his links to his best friend, who's a paedophile. Of course. Support. So there are I mean, they all so, involved in the UK? And, uh, and we, we had Prince Andrew was caught out having sex with a fourteen-year-old girl, which makes him a paedophile. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and that and that crap that he came out with on the interview he did mm. with the with the BBC or whatever. I mean, what a, what an insult to anyone's intelligence. We had Epstein. And all the people on the list. You know, now was the time. Now was the time for this whole filth to be exposed, for the for the light to be shone mm. in that sewer of, of, of wretched abuse. But we that do have. Sorry, John. And there's a huge amount of people that are waking up on social well, well, media. Well, well, they're, they're, they're waking up. But what's happened is, you know. Uh, they were waking up beforehand, and coronavirus has totally engulfed this nation. It has come over us like a tidal wave, and, and no one really cares anymore. What happened is gone, it's finished. The child abuse stuff is history. I don't, sorry, I don't agree with you there, because as I say, there were 10 million views for Out of Shadows. I, I really think that people are really asking a lot of questions now well, on well, social media. They might be, but then you, you said yourself, you, you were asking people uh, about me, they had no idea of me. Well, again, it's not about me. I don't care if anyone has or hasn't. But I, what I say is I will be the mouthpiece. I will stand and I will be counted and I will fight against this system to expose Good. Good. this. And I will. Good. And I don't care who stands in my way. The, the amount of trolling I've received and negative mm. comments, mm. I don't care. I am not interested, and I mm. see these people uh, as cowardly, vile, pervert protectors. So I'm not bothered about that. But then you said other, other, other people don't get it. They don't understand it. They are starting to. They are starting to. I, do you make any connection at all with Liz Crokin in America with the work she's uh, doing? Uh, uh, my stuff was passed to her. Um, uh, Luke Collins knows her, and my stuff was passed. But I haven't um, heard anything. Some guy called Ben, a former U.S. Navy SEAL, has been in touch with me. Right. Um, uh, I did get things from Joe Rogan, um, the yeah. big podcast out there about going up. So, um, well, hopefully things, as I say, you believe in God, I believe in God. I believe this is an opportunity now to wipe out all the evil of the world. You know, that, that's what I'd like to think. I, I, I'm with you, Lauren, and I think what's happening is, is that if people don't get that what's going on with this corona thing, 
I'm not saying it doesn't exist. Yeah. I, and, and my heart goes to anyone who's lost someone that, that has genuinely died from COVID-19, genuinely died from it, and not as a result of, of a, an underlying major illness, right? My heart yes. goes out to them. Yeah. But to lock us down in the most beautiful weather we've ever had, which would probably cure 90% of all illnesses anyway. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you, you know? Good timing. And then, and, <laughs> and then to keep us all indoors and, and our economy is going to collapse and not allowing us to exercise and all this, it's wrong and it, it's got horrible, vile undertones. Um, and if people don't get that this is a huge stitch up, um, then we can't get to them. What can we do? Oh, they are getting it, John. They are. Believe me, they are getting it. And uh, the, one of the questions I have is, do you think the NHS has deviated from its original ideals? Has it become a political pawn? Oh, 100%. Now, now what, what you've got to do, talk to anyone who's living under communism, and they will tell you that we are steamrolling into communism. Um, a Polish group got in touch with me and they said, you know, we lived under communism. We were under communism. Communism is so wretched that it, it just it just saturates the soul. So in Poland, they're in lockdown, which is like what we've got, but with bells on. And the Polish have just fallen straight into it because communism never left their soul. And the one thing they said to me, you know, England, your weather's rubbish, you know, your food's horrible, your taxes are too high and all this, but... You've got something that no other country has got, and that, and that is ultimate freedom. Mm. And we have. Our police on the whole aren't armed. We police by consent, not by fear or force. There'll be people who disagree with that, but I don't care about that. You know, the Spanish have fallen straight in to, to, to toe in the line because they have a paramilitary police force, the Guarda Civil. They're a socialist nation. So is Italy with the Carabinieri. They do as they're told, and, and the consequences are dire. They don't. You know, so these, these are, are easy to sort of fall in. We have got freedom, and we are giving away our freedom, Lauren, mm. by people ringing up the police because their neighbours taking more than two yeah, um, tours of exercise a day. I terrible, mean, yeah. It's, it's like a Nazi stuff. regime. I'm Jewish. Oh, well, what, <laughs> yes, what, it's like a Nazi more, regime. Who are these morons? Yeah. You know, um, and, and, and is we, we are giving away our freedom, and we are... And, and this is wrong. It's something that, that made this nation, you know, beautiful. We've always, always got to have hope. We've always got to look on the positives. We cannot always dwell on the negative. You know, I always say, people say to me, well, what's the point? Even my own mum said it. Well, what's the point of doing this? And I have to say, well, to do nothing isn't an option. I know, I know that there are people that, that, have, that have not committed suicide because of the work I've done. And I know that for a fact. So I've done my job. Yeah. I know I have opened up, you know, there's millions of people that have listened to my testimony and seen my work now. And I know that I have done my job in exposing the fact that the Metropolitan Police and, and, and the nation's police forces deliberately at Commissioner and Chief Constable levels, co levels cover this up. And mm -hmm. I've, I've been part of, the, you know, the, the, the gang that's um, exposed that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know... I've done, I've done something, and I have. I know I'll continue to do it. I, every time I speak out, I feel stronger each time. I, I have no fear when it comes to this. Of course, I'm frightened of other things. But when it comes to this topic, I know my shit, and, and I will keep speaking out, and I will keep doing all I can to protect the children, because my fear is nothing compared to that of a poor little child that is having the duvet, the blanket taken from uh, over them in the middle of the night. Oh, God, you know, I, I that, that is imagine. raw fear. And anyone who does that to a child, may, may they suffer in hell, whether you're believing in heaven or hell. Do you know, it, it doesn't matter, Lauren, because yes. do you know what? They're going to find out. They're going to find out. Their days will come to an end like all of our days will. And they'll find out that the God they've been worshipping ain't going to look after them. No, of course not. So, John, t tell us about the John Wedger Foundation. Right. Um, this, this came out of a need to sort of have a, a cohesive um, point of reference. I mean, it's still, it's pretty hollow, but I am getting a lot more interest um, and I'm getting a lot more professionals offering their services now. And hopefully it will become 
a non-profit making organisation. And at the moment, it is just um, a, a, co a collection of, of my testimony and others that we put on there. Um, people can contact me via the website on there, via the email on there. What and, is um, the email address? It, it's John Wedger, so it's J-O-N, so I've not got, uh, yes. I have got an H in there, so it's J-O-N, Wedger, W-E-D-G-E-R, and the word foundation, um, um, at G gmail.co, uh, dot com, sorry, at gmail.com. Thank you. So they can, they can email me. I mean, I, I will do my best, and and my, I, my 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 mission statement is to be the mouthpiece for those that they haven't got it. So, um, liable laws taken into consideration. I will go out. I will take a live testimony, which I'll publish on Facebook and then onto YouTube, of of, of, of people's experiences. Now they can be first-hand experiences um, of, of victims of, of abuse. Um, I've got a, an incredible testimony to come out of a victim of satanic abuse, which, you know, even with my time in the police, this has to be the most shocking and horrific I've ever heard. And then this brave lady is going to give that. I've taken testimonies from criminal profilers, FBI profilers, from uh, um, the head of the um, NHS psychiatry department, um, talking about mental health and the links to abuse. I've spoken to prison staff. Um, I've spoken to ex-criminals um, that, that, that have lived a life of crime and now go and help. I've, I've um, spoken to alcoholics, drug addicts. You know, anyone, people have lost their children. I'm going to be doing one at 7 o'clock on my Facebook tonight with a woman who's had lost two of her children through the wretched family court system. You know, so I will, I will do everything out there and put these testimonies out there. You know, they're near enough guaranteed 20,000 hits. Um, some go on into the hundreds of thousands. There's one that went on uh, so to get 2.2 million. And it, I don't know, you know, it's just what is it, a favour. And I just said I will be a platform. And, and Lauren, the devil's biggest weapon, right, is our silence. Yes. You know, we cannot be silent yeah. because if we, you know, there's the Manic Street Preachers have got a song and it says if we tolerate this, then our children will be next. Mm. And that is so true. You know, our children will be next. Uh, and we can't allow this to happen. We well, have our to children say, are now. They're, they, they're they, the ones who are, yes. Uh, and, and, and Innocence. You know, you look, uh, uh, you know, all we ever do is pick up the pieces of a broken society. Damage, damage, yes, you know. I mean, anger is born out of fear. Violence comes from the anger. And, that, and, and a lot of that is stemmed in childhood. You know, the, the hatred and the anger for what people have done to them. And then, of course, innocent people get hurt. Mm. And, and it just causes the whole thing to break down and collapse. And then... Poor life choices are made, abusive partners are picked, you know, low self-esteem, and then the children get caught up in this system again, and on it goes. And we're, we're not stopping it, we're not addressing the problem. We need to grasp the nettle, we need to grab the ball by the horns, and we need to say enough. And, and people are going to get their noses put out of joint, they are going to get upset and hurt. Uh, but do you know what? It's a small price to pay if we can stop children being abused. Exactly. And I think one of the things that gets to people, myself included, is the amount of DBS checks that we have to go through, innocent people, to work with kids or to work in the care you know, system in any way, residential yeah. homes. And this lot, these awful, disgusting people, are getting away with it, doing whatever they want. And, and, and no one is doing anything about it except, you know, I'm not saying, of course you're doing a huge amount about it. I'm talking about the system, the media. I, I pray that we get some light workers that they will turn up in the media at some point and they'll start telling the truth. Well, well the shame on the media now. Now I sat down with, with, with a cabinet minister and um, 
an assistant editor for, for the Mail on Sunday. And, and he told me, this editor, he said, for 10 years, I tried to put stories out about Leon Britton. For 10 years, he said, John, I knew what he was doing with little boys, but it kept getting blocked. So journalists have genuinely tried to get stuff out, but, that you know, their managers block them. Now, who are these managers? And who is blocking them? Mm-hmm. You know, why are these chief constables refusing to investigate it? And, of course, that, this has come out in the recent IICSA government inquiry. And um, mm-hmm. one of the things was, was said was that we were told because the investigation involved politicians to back away by the military intelligence, MI5 and MI6. So mm-hmm. why are MI5 and MI6 not being dragged in? Mm-hmm. Now, now let's look at uh, who right was in charge. Top, doesn't it? Who was in charge of MI6 during the height of all this? And it was a guy called um, Sir Peter Heyman. Sir Peter Heyman was identified as being a prolific child abuser and got convicted of it. He was in charge of MI6. So who, who put him in there? Who allowed this wretched paedophile? Mm. And, and, and who mm. knew about it and who mm. protected him? Um, so, and Jimmy Savile, of course, all that stuff course. with Jimmy Savile and the royal family. I mean, it's all been covered up uh, uh, for uh, some uh, reason why, because it's why, much higher, isn't it? It's higher than why, it goes really is, high up. Why is there still a BBC? Mm. Right? Why, why is that still there? Uh, why is Esther Ransom still working? Why? Why is Harriet Harman still there? Because they're in the group. They're all in yeah, but, but I'll tell you what. But they might not they might not be at the top, but like I said, never look at what you haven't got, look at what you have got. They're all we have got. We should be going hammer and tongs to get Esther Ransom convicted or removed or make sure she never works again in anything that, that's credulous. Harriet Harman should be removed immediately. Mm. And then if, if your listeners are as passionate as me, then tell them to write. I implore you to write. To write. To your MP, write to her, write to the Ombudsman for MPs, write to the Prime Minister and get her removed. What about change.org? Do you trust those <laughs> sites? I am um, 38 degrees or wherever it is. I've written to them so many times and spoke to them and they never get back to me. What I'm about change.org? Because our youth uh, petitions starting on there, like hundreds of thousands of people go on there. Well, I mean, look. Let's look at a few years ago when uh, the, the British society was in uproar because a woman was caught on a private CCTV camera, residential CCTV camera, walked along, she picked up a cat, she opened a wheelie bin and she threw the cat in the wheelie bin, right? Yeah. Oh, there were groups out there banging for her blood, right? You know... I, I'm, I'm not here to advocate cruelty against animals, but I'm really not bothered what happened to that cat, and it shouldn't have happened. And I am an animal lover, but yeah, you know, I do you know what? My cat. Really? Oh, yeah, I get You know, saying. she threw a, a thing in the, in the bin, right? Yeah. It was saved, it weren't harmed, but they wanted this woman hung, drawn, and quartered, right? We are seeing the abuse. The rape and the murder of children. Yeah, but no, no one no is one seeing cares. it directly. You see, what happened there is well, everyone but, saw her yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, well, they did, right? But, you know, no one listens. And, and they put the parameters so, so high when you investigate these cases. And, and I've been on child abuse investigations for many years. Like the historic case had a 2% success rate. I achieved an 80% success rate within them very, very low parameters. But... I did it because I believed in what I was doing and, and I, I would do it hate-filled with every sinew in my body because I don't like paedophiles. But the, the, the British police aren't training coppers to, to that standard that I was at. They are not investigating or investing in child abuse investigations. So no wonder they're, they're deliberately understaffed and overworked. So no wonder it's not happening. And if you think that a paedophile is going to sexually abuse a kid on the top deck of a bus or in rush hour in view of everyone, it ain't going to happen. Well, it but was it getting that mean, way, eh, John? It was it getting that way. <laughs> it, yeah, not far from it, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Yeah. But unfortunately, and then they brought in the evidence of bad character under the Criminal Justice Act. 
where, where anyone that had a drug conviction or a shoplifting conviction, which tend to go hand in hand, their cohorts in crime, these things, well, you know, what was the common denominator? Child abuse, taking the heroin as an analgesic for abuse, stealing to fund it, and then getting caught for nicking, mm. right? But then they go before a court, they're classed as a person of dishonesty, they're deliberately and immediately denigrated, and then they're classed as a liar. Mm. Mm. And we have seen so many of these high-profile cases with high-profile people who walk free um, claiming they're innocent. Well, they're not innocent, it's just that the, the burden of proof, the high standard of proof, just didn't get attained. Um, but it doesn't mean it didn't happen. You know, and then we've yeah. got to look at victimology. We've got to look at why victims don't speak out. And we've got to look at the lack of therapy for victims. Well, a lot of people, uh, I mean, I was abused. I'm not going to go into it too much, but I was just quite, I didn't say anything. I didn't th say anything. I didn't even know I was abused till I got uh, married and I was 30 years old and suddenly I realized I was abused. So this is also a problem where the child goes into shock and is numbed and, you know, doesn't even know what they've been through. Of course. Of course, and, and then the other thing we got to look at, um, when they prey on children, well, what about handicapped kids? You know, there, there's kids out there that can't communicate. Mm. You know, who are they going to tell? Um, it, it's just, it, I, you know, the strange thing is many years ago, uh, we, we lived in um, <coughs> the family home, which was in, in, in Paddington, in central London. And there were twin brothers who lived down the road from us, and they were both deaf and dumb. And uh, everyone used to take the mickey out of them because they, they classed them as idiots, really. They, they were like, couldn't communicate. They made these sort of grunting noises the way of communicating but uh, you know they were deaf and dumb but what we didn't realise was that their father had been horrifically violently and sexually abusing these kids mm. um, and, and basically torturing them for many years mm. and it was only years later when I um, was in the uh, child abuse unit and I, I got a, a referral come through and um, this um, suspect cropped up and it was one of these one of these twins and the profile on him was that he was one of the most dangerous paedophiles in the country and wouldn't hesitate to kill to kill um uh, a child and was planning on abducting children and um and well i couldn't believe it he was my neighbor but at the time no one knew it was only years later that his sister revealed what had happened to all of them and you know i actually had a little bit of sorrow for him because he would also be beaten up by all the kids on the estate and everything else but he was harboring all this vile filth that his father put onto him which had created a monster in his own right mm. um it's, it's just it, it really the, the moment you look into it it, it it and it's never ending and it gets worse and worse and then that's without going down the lines of the satanic ritual, which takes depravity to a whole new level. Right. A whole new level. Yeah, um, but, but to walk away just isn't an option, you know. We're a proud race. We're a race of people that stood up against Humanity, tyranny. yes. Yeah, and humanity and, and we're fighting you know, for our lives at the moment, John. We're fighting for our freedom at the moment. Well, well, well that's right. I don't think we're fighting to beat off coronavirus, I think you're right, we're fighting against... For our freedom, against our freedom. something yeah. evil that... Yeah. Can I just thank you? I'm, I'm so grateful for what you're doing, We, you know, and and, it's, and those people that have been asking me also to interview you. Um, but because I like to end with a little bit of hope, because I always say bringing the hope back into Always. our lives, what can we say... Um, to lighten the load a little well, well, bit or to offer a little well, bit of hope? Well, well, everything that we've done has been hope. You know, we've exposed this wound to the light. We have taken the light of justice and love and of Jesus into the sewer and we shone it and the rats have jumped everywhere. Okay, they've bitten back, but they have scarpered as, at the same time. Mm -hmm. We've got to keep this eye together. We have seen with, 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 with what we were doing with the, the protest, planned protest, organisations 
all different survival groups coming together like never, ever before. That's amazing. And that is fantastic. We need what happened in Belgium with the Mark de True case. We need everyone who cares about their children to peacefully, and I mean this, peacefully, but with forthright and stern hearts, take to the streets of London and make them listen. We are seeing... Um, you know, these perverts within our institutions exposed. We would have never got that 70, in the 70s, the 60s. We yeah. are seeing uh, local authorities being exposed Massive for deliberately awakening. allowing paedophiles to work with care homes. So we are seeing exposure like never before. And, and the credibility of witnesses is, is unbelievable. The church, the religious institutions being exposed the Pope being exposed. Yes. Uh, uh, who's that Cardinal Pell in Australia? Yeah. Although they've released him, but again, it doesn't matter. He's been exposed. Yeah, and, the royal and, family. And, and, and <laughs> the royal family, yeah. yeah. And, and this has to, if nothing else, empower victims to speak out. It's got to because it empowers me to keep doing what I'm doing. And me. And, and yeah. also, from what you said, thank you so much, John. This is a beautiful, beautiful way to end. Is that everyone, no, even if it's not your child, we have a responsibility to all the children in the world. We have a responsibility to maintain and keep children safe and to protect innocence. So whoever you are, go out there. Now you know what's going on. Go out there and say, we do not consent. End of. <laughs> End yeah, of. Yeah, and, and you know what? Drop the fear because the abusers have the fear. They're frightened of being exposed. They're frightened of going to prison. They're frightened of losing their power. And they're frightened, but we have the power because we have righteousness on our side and, and God's on our side and we hold the power. We've just got to realise that we have the power. And, and just to say, no, don't let it happen. Empower yourself and do not be frightened because these people are cowards. And it's anyone fantastic. Yeah. Or attacks yeah. us. And, and don't let people attack us either. You know, yeah. if someone starts, you know, oh, the things have been said against me. And, and I don't care and I fight back against it, you know. Um, but just believe in yourself. And, and the guilt and the shame is not yours to hold. Give yeah. it up to God, he'll take it off you. It's the abusers that, that have the gear, guilt, the shame and, and the fear because they're inadequate. They're inadequate and, um, and that's it really. It is a yeah. massive awakening. I mean, when you go onto Lady Gaga's Instagram and see all the people putting out there, you're a paedophile, you're a paedophile. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. She got uh, like uh, a uh, thousand uh, views instead of a million. <laughs> for her last, you know, so things like that make my heart jump up and down and, yeah. and oh, we oh, know it's a great awakening. Oh, oh people aren't having it anymore. And, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think there's many people that, that believe Cliff Richard's side of the story anymore either. Because he know? was involved with M, was it M House or M Street? A El, home? El Guest House, yeah. But he goes and by again. the name of Kitty, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and again... He, he can say what he wants, he can yeah. say what he wants. And there's not many people believe the McCanns either, is there, you know? No. Are there uh, any good celebrities? <laughs> well, well, who would want that sort of life? It, well, you know, yeah. what, what yeah. I, I mean, it's just a perverse, abhorrent life. And, um, and, well, if there are, do you know what? By their fruit shall we know them. Exactly. They need to come forward. Then, then grow a pair and come forward, and then we'll yes. accept you. But if you're not going to, <laughs> then you're you're like the rest of the film, mm -hmm. degenerate weirdos, you know. And that's what they are. But if they want to stand up, then, then stand up and shout out and speak out. And the same with the police officers, you know. If you've seen the cover up, stand up, speak out, come mm -hmm. forward. Um, I, I got I got contacted by um, the Freemasons, uh, a motorbike club, and. Uh, 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 the guy that runs it, he said, look, we love what you do. Can we join your uh, protest? I said, of really? course you can join. I said, of course you can join. And uh, I said to the others, does anyone mind? And they went, look, if they're doing it for the right reasons, of course not. Yeah. Of course not. You know, are the, you know do, are, a lot of people think the Freemasons are, are satanistic. Is that true? Do you well, think? I, I, think, I think the essence of, 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 of that, yeah, I think it's a Luciferian uh, organisation. Right. Right. Uh, but again, They've been hoodwinked. I, I was brought up a Catholic. I now see the Church of Rome as a Luciferian yeah, organisation. I, I never yeah. knew. 
focus it's on. So, uh, but, 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 but now I think, you know, and I think the same as that. And that I work with, with, with so many uh, lads that are into Freemasonry and all that. And, um, you know, and a lot of them end up saying, well, it's just a load of old nonsense at the end of it. But the, 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 the deeper you go and the further on you go, it's pyramid selling. Um, yeah. And ultimately... You will, you will be put in a position where there will be no ambiguity. This is the mm. worship of the devil. Mm. Um, and mm. really, if you didn't know up until that time, then it's time to get out of it and cleanse yourself of it and, uh, and move forward. But, you know, if it, as long as people... I've, I've got people who have come to me that, that used to be Satanists and have turned their back on it. Um, murderers. I've, I've spent so much time with, with, with ex-murderers. But they're putting things right. It's not for me to judge. By, again, by their, by their fruit show, you know them. If they're doing good and <coughs> moving forward, then, then they're welcome. Yeah. Um, but if they're not, and they're not doing any good, then they can sod off. I don't want to know. Of course. Uh, but, it's but, like that you know, banker as well, that he wouldn't do what they said, and he uh, left yeah, and became I, a whistleblower, uh, didn't he? Uh, yeah, I met him, Ronald Bernard. I yeah, met him. Yeah. He's, um, he, he's a strange individual, I must admit, but... Um, yeah, as long as they speak out and, and let us into their little secret world. But, no, you're right. People aren't, they're not having it anymore. And um, I'm getting messages now saying, you was on about this 10 years ago. You know, my God, you was right. Or messages mm. come up. John Wedger mentioned this a long time ago. But I was laughed at. I was absolutely mocked, laughed at. Um, you know, told what's the point and, and all that. But now, you know, it slowly turned. And, and do you know what it was with me? It was it was the strength of the victims and survivors that that really really kept me going. Uh, incredible! I've met some brilliant people, and I have. And um, and my best friends now are all ex criminals um, and victims of abuse. And they are. And, and but I've, I've never met such decent and honourable people. And um, I've got one or two ex police officer mates, um, but not many. Not many. A lot of them. Uh, sort of abandoned me when it all got too tough. Um, and do I blame them? Well, you know, they, they've got their families to look after. They want to pay their mortgages off. They want their pension. So, um, but for me, I, I, Lauren, I couldn't shut my eyes at night uh, knowing what I knew. And uh, if I did nothing, these kids were, um, you know, getting out. It was a bit like hearing a dog crying out in the back garden at night. And it's freezing cold and you... You're trying to get the sleep and ignoring it. You can't. No, right? you can't. I can't so, but let's, as I say, let's let's end in a really positive message. So yeah, it yeah. is a great awakening, and we're all, you know, people are. St <laughs> excuse me. People are starting to ask questions. People are going out and doing things, and it's growing and growing and growing. And we're, we're, we're winning. We were, we're winning. We are, we're winning. We are winning. Yes. And, and each day we win a bit more. Each day. You know, and Jesus wins ultimately anyway. He's got this one. And, uh, uh, you know, we are. We're, we're gaining ground. We're taking back these souls that don't belong to these evil people. And we're, you know, and we're giving them where they should be. And, that, and that's giving them back to God. Mm. And, uh, mm. and that's it. And I think we've done a hell of a lot of good. And I think the future is going to be very, very bright indeed. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, John. I so appreciate this. I'm going to try and get this on. Uh, as soon as possible, I'm going to do it now, so hopefully I'll get it on by this evening. You know, Lots of love. Right. Take care. Look after yourself now. Yeah, and, and you. God bless you. You and too. God if bless. If you want to tune in, 7 o'clock tonight on my Facebook page, I'm doing a, a, a live feed and a prayer for two children that have been, um, are, are, are being badly hurt as we speak, and um, okay. we're doing a prayer for them. Okay. He uh, exposed three blokes that were, were trying to abuse children in centre parks and he got arrested. So I, I stood up to him and said, you know, I'm not involved with his politics. I don't agree with his politics, but he did the right thing. Yeah. And the police did yeah. the wrong thing. And, and it was me that got, got done by uh, the Facebook so, um, yeah. yeah, and like I say, you know, for me, it was kind of like said like a joke, you know, because people, when they go out there and they're clapping, some people don't come out all week. They just open the window, put their hands out and start clapping at nine o'clock in the evening. And I've been hearing a lot of stuff, you know, and about what's really going on. And, and I, I just said there on Facebook, I put a post up there and said, 
Or why not just shout, Hi, Hitler, Hi, Hitler, Hi, Hi, and, and they just cut me off for 24 hours. So well, well, that's what happens you know, I mean, now. <laughs> well, well, what we're doing is that they are being used, um, the NHS, and, and it's getting us to worship authority. Um, and ultimately, they're, they're just going to um, bring in more and more sanctions and... Uh, Things will never go back to the lovely freedom that we had before it won't. Mm. I can't see it happening. Well, as we right. say, we're in a great awakening. And I, I definitely believe that something's taken control of the planet, which is positive and full of love. Hopefully. <laughs> have to keep hoping every single day and living in the moment as much as possible. But you take care, John, and thank you so much. And lots of love. And I'll send you this.